This video is for the discussion on the experiments and key findings from Nuremberg and Mathai's and Nuremberg and Leder's approach to determining the genetic code. Marshall Nuremberg joined the NIH as a research biochemist in 1959. He set out to discover whether it was DNA or RNA that was the template for protein synthesis. He was joined by Heinrich Mathai, a postdoctoral fellow from Germany who helped design and conduct their experiments. Nuremberg and Mathai developed a new technique for grinding up E. coli bacteria cells using a mortar and pestle in order to rupture the cell wall. This way they could perform the experiment in the bacteria's cytoplasm. This was a groundbreaking technique at the time. This experiment also involved creating synthetic homopolymers with the enzyme polynucleotide phosphorylase. These homopolymers consisted of one repeating nucleotide. Their experimental design consisted of 20 test tubes, one for each amino acid. 19 test tubes were cold, while the last one was radioactively tagged with carbon-14, so scientists could examine the particular amino acid later. The amino acid assigned to the radioactive test tube would change with each repetition. They wanted to know if an amino acid would be incorporated into a protein following the addition of some synthetic RNA. The test tubes were incubated at body heat temperature, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, for one hour. On a Saturday in May 1961, at 3 o'clock in the morning, Heinrich Mathai used a synthetic RNA made only of uracil, also known as poly-U. In the hot test tube during this experiment was phenylalanine. After an hour, the control tubes displayed small levels of activity, while the hot tube showed something entirely different. A chain of repeating bases of uracil created a protein comprised of one single repeating amino acid, phenylalanine. They had discovered that UUU coded for phenylalanine. Now they had the information to crack the code for all homopolymers. They found out later that AAA would code for lysine and CCC would code for proline. Nuremberg did not stop there. By 1964, new innovations allowed for all codons to be made in vitro and not just single nucleotide homopolymers. With the help of Philip Leder, Nuremberg designed another experiment where they mixed together constructed mRNA codons with 20 charged tRNAs. 19 normal, 1 radioactive. Ribosomes from the cytoplasm would be able to bind to a codon, and the complementary tRNA would also bind to the complex. By pairing specific tRNAs to the amino acids produced, they now possess the ability to decipher which mRNA sequence would code for which amino acid. This triplet binding assay led to the discovery of specific relationships between triplet codons and amino acids.